No one has scored more points for South Africa in Sevens Rugby than Sissel Africa. And after we thought we bid him farewell from the Sevens jersey in 2020 and he went off to San Diego to go play 15s Rugby, he made a brief cameo for his country at Rugby World Cup Sevens in Cape Town in 2022. But now the question is, what's next? I'm in Stellenbosch to find out. The man, the myth, the legend, Sissel Africa. Thank you for having us. This place is lacquer. How beautiful is this? Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming to our house. 18 coffee. Thank you so much. And get some quality coffee. Thank you. Thank you, boss. I'm sorry to offend for having a rooibos tea, but when in South Africa? <laughs> I feel like I just need to. You just need to. You know what? Actually, I was in, in France a couple of weeks ago, and then the one lady uh, as part of the management team actually bought me a rooibos tea. What were you doing in France? I was playing actually sevens uh, for Monaco. I thought you were retired. That's what I also thought I was retired. I like playing and uh, whenever I get the opportunity to to share my knowledge with the people and also maybe give a one kid or one girl opportunity to also maybe travel the world and see the world, you know. Never thought I'll, I'll be in Rio de Janeiro, but in 2016 I was there for the, for the Olympic Games. Didn't you get a photo with Matthew McConaughey there? <laughs> Is yeah. that your most famous fan? Most definitely. <laughs> most definitely is. Tell us about how far away that is from where you come from. Because sure. Sissel at home, like, that's a different world even. To Rio de Janeiro hanging out with Matthew McConaughey, right? I've, I've never even, I never even dreamed. I, I never even dreamed actually. Let me not say play for the Springboks, but uh, obviously as you grew up 1995, we know what what rugby means for South Africa and what happened in 1995. Reason how I got exposed to rugby was because I stutter and to prevent conversations with people, I will, I will go play touch rugby. You know, where I, where I know I, I, don't have, I, I don't need to have long conversations. Where I come from in, in the community, the guys like to, like to pick on us guys who stutter, guys who got, who got big heads and stuff like that. And then you feel out, so I knew I don't want to be part of that conversation. I just wanted to be there out there and, and just be a kid. And that is how I got exposed to, to rugby. The next thing led to the next thing. And then I got a scholarship, went to Valcom. For someone who's never been to Valcom, <laughs> how do you even explain? So you are originally from, the, I mean, these two places are the opposite ends of the spectrum. This is a scary this place. Is, this, is, this is a scary place. The first day I got there, then I started crying actually, because every, second hour you see one car drive past the the accommodation where we stayed and then i'm then i literally started crying and i'm like where are you coming to but i knew why i actually came then and then i just wiped off my tears and just How and just stay strong i was about 16 years old the reason why i actually uh, went there was that my mom was the only breadwinner in our house and she earned about 350 rent a month. And my dad was every day of his life, he was under the under influence of, of alcohol. And then I was about like 13, 14, and then I told myself, or even young, I don't want to drink one day, alcohol and stuff like that. But then the, the opportunity came for me to relieve uh, pressure from my mom, like financially, when this scholarship came then, and then I went, I, I, I didn't even ask my mom and, and my dad. I just told them, listen, this, this opportunity came, so I'm leaving. Because for me, it's all about making sure that she can get through the month. I went there as a, as a scrum off. I thought I was a scrum off, and then uh, the first game I played, I played wing. Then I scored two tries, then I was man of the match. The next game I played fullback, scored three tries. And, and then the coach said, listen, this is your position. You're not a, you're not a scrum off. And then, uh, leave it. yeah, just leave it. And then I started, obviously, I played Caribbean Week for the Griffins for two years. And then after that, then I obviously signed with the Griffins for a couple of years. And then after that, moved to Springbok Sevens. By just making that decision at a young age, I never knew actually where it could take me one day. I just knew at that moment, I just need to give my mom financial freedom, you know, and, and, and this is the part I, I needed to take. She must be so proud. My mom, <laughs> she will never say it, but uh, I know deep down inside she is, she is actually proud of what I've achieved. 
What was it like playing at Rugby World Cup Sevens, being the senior <laughs> statesman, the elder, as we say in Africa? It was a kind of like a, a weird feeling uh, because obviously I'm, I'm coming from outside in and I'm joining the guys leading the week leading up to the World Cup. It, it was something truly totally special, obviously, been out of the game for about like two years, so not part of the Springbok 7 system for about two years, but I've been following the game while I was outside. How much has it changed? The game of sevens has changed a lot, massively. Uh, I think the intensity is quite higher, yeah. Tell me about San Diego. San Diego, it was a very interesting journey, beautiful city, very expensive, nice weather. I was quite blessed in the sense of where I started my career was at the low level with the Griffins where we didn't even have meetings or we didn't have strapping. It's kind of similar in the sense of it's still semi-professional. But it's amazing how people know a lot of like sevens players compared to fifteens. And that was quite a scary thought for me because I remember uh, the one day, obviously Chris, Chris Robshaw, uh, me and him played in the same team at San Diego Legion. I, don't, I can't remember where we went and then we, we were standing there and the people recognized me and I'm like, why do you, do you recognize me? I'm standing next to Chris Robshaw. Then I realized actually it's because I've played rugby sevens in America and rugby sevens is the fastest growing sport in America and that's how I, the people actually recognize me. It's just amazing how sevens have, have grown in America and, and how the Americans love, love sevens. And then I'm like, listen, I got the extra bigger name than Chris Robshaw. <laughs> now that is just a joke. The early interviews with you, because I remember when you came on the scene, were so hard for me to watch because I had a stutter as a child. And I can remember it so clearly. And I could see how hard you were trying to express yourself. Yeah. And you have come such a long way from when you first became a Springbok Sevens player to yeah. how you're sitting here now just yeah. chatting. Yeah, it was it was it was very tough, I had to say thanks to Mzwandle Sticks, you know, Spring Mox, Spring yeah. assistant coach. Because you was the one who always pulled me in. Hey, hey, come here. That guy was was hard on me, but I never knew why. You know, he saw something in me in me that, that I never saw in myself. You know, I, I'm just a kid from Mission Vale. I just want to play rugby. When I played for the Griffins, we never had a lot of meetings. We only had the meeting when we played maybe against SWD. But when I come to Springbok Sevens, there was every single day there was meetings. And I couldn't take it because I don't like these meetings, you know. I just, I just want to play, yeah. you know. I just want to go there and, and express myself and then ask my opinion about stuff. And I'm like, I don't know, you know. I'm, I just want to be outside on the pitch and play. So then Mzwanele Sticks was the guy whenever we, we had a function and he used to slap me, come here behind my head or pull me, come stand here and ask to me, talk to the people because I know like I stutter, you know, and, and I don't want to like embarrass myself and I'm a shy guy because I'm, I'm stuttering, you know, and then that is how I, I started to embrace it and, and overcome it, you know, through him for forcing me to, to speak to people. And then eventually, slowly but surely, things, things got better and better. What's next? What's next? Hopefully, do some more coaching uh, in the States. Try and grow the game of rugby in America. And then uh, we'll take it from there. We'll see what happens after that, maybe in the next cycle. When is the next Olympics? 2024, 2028, and I'll maybe coach America. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So, so yeah. Laugh, be serious uh, about it. We will see. We don't know what the future holds, but uh, just trying to love in the now. Well, you have made the best of a very humble start. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just really, totally grateful for the opportunity I got. 